Hi folks. <coughs> this video here was inspired by my friend Doug who has uh, Jesus Words Only and then Corey, another good friend of mine online, uh, shared some different things and it really struck me and it kind of inspired me to do this video. What I would like to do is address friends who believe in the Word of God. I would like you to help me. I'm going to ask you some questions and I want to see if you can help me see this. Okay? Because I've been accused of being a heretic, uh, questioning the Bible, questioning Paul, uh, challenging the history of the Bible and different things. And uh, I want to just bring up uh, just a couple things that I think would help if you could help me. And so I just had my hair cut and I probably should have washed my I'm beautiful again. <laughs> no. But uh, the light, the light that came when Paul was on the road to Damascus. When you and I read the Bible, we have a lot of presupposed ideas. And so my question is, is what would you and I do if we had the information that the Lord Jesus gave his true apostles? How would we react or respond to that bright light? Acts 9, verses 3 through 8. This is Paul. Now as he, Paul, went on his way, he approached Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven shone, from, shone around him. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. My question is, if I seen that light, I'm just asking some legitimate question. Is this wrong to do this? The light from heaven. The word heaven instantly makes me think of a beam of light shining down from heaven. But if you look at the Greek word, it is actually could be sky. A light from the sky shone around him. And the word Lord, he says, who are you, Lord? Paul, Saul was asking, who are you? The word Lord, if you look at it, can also be sir or master. Like, oh, sir, who are you? See? But because the translators make it heaven and Lord, they automatically, in our mindset, say that, who, say who's, who's talking from heaven would be Jesus. See, Saul believed who the light claimed to be. Acts 22, 6 through 10. As I was on my way and drew near to Damascus about noon, a great light from heaven suddenly shone around me. And I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And I answered, Who are you? You have to remember, Paul never met Jesus. He never spent three years with him. He never heard his voice. So at this moment, all Paul had was a bright light either a ball or from the sky or whatever that's not clear you can say whatever you want and I can say whatever I want type of light but Saul and people believe what the light said but I'm going to continue on here let's go let's look here I'm going to ask this one this is when Paul uh, was in, in uh, Jerusalem when he made an attempt he walked several weeks from Damascus to get into Jerusalem because they wanted to meet with the apostles. Acts 22 verses 18 through 21. When I had returned to Jerusalem and was praying in the temple, I fell into a trance. Now that word trance, uh, I meant to lift the verse up, but remember there was a lady who was going around saying these men have a way of salvation. And so the uh, Python priestess, a lot of times she was in a trance, so it's a similar thing. It's not a vision or a dream, but it's a trance. It's like some supernatural event was happening. And saw him, 
an angel of light say to me, Make haste and get out of Jerusalem quickly, because they will not accept your testimony. Verse 19, And I said, Lord, they themselves know that I that in one synagogue after another I imprisoned and beat those who believed in you, and that the blood of Stephen, your witness, was being shed. I myself was standing by and approving and watching over the garments of those who killed him. And he said, Go, I will send you far away to the Gentiles. That bright light, think about it, that bright light came and revealed himself. We believe it was Jesus that claims to be Jesus. Why could that Jesus not appear to his own apostles if Paul, if he wanted Paul to join with them? This light this, and that appeared to him in a trance told him to flee from them. They will not believe him. You and I have never con contemplated the idea that Jesus himself is saying that I can't even talk to my own guys who walk with me and know my voice and know my actions and know everything there is about me. Think about it. The light, the deception. This is the origin. This is the very, very beginning of it. Who are you, Lord? Saul did not know who that person was. Now, if, if Paul had walked with Jesus, and you and I are told that we believe the Word of God, and that we cannot be distracting and cutting things in and out and subtracting things, Okay, then let's look at Matthew 24, 24. This is what, you sh what Jesus said to the true apostles. Jesus said to them, Beware that no one leads you astray, for many will come in my name saying, I am the Messiah, and they will lead you astray. Did Paul have? Saul didn't have any warnings of this. See? It was some supernatural event. It was a bright light. Why would he not believe it? Matthew 24, verses 24 through 26. Many Christs and false apostles will arise and perform great signs and wonders so that they lead many astray, if possible, even the elect. So I have told you before, if, you, if they say to you, look, he was in the wilderness, do not go. Or if they say he's in the upper room, do not believe it. The true apostles were warned that if anything or person or one comes and claims to be Jesus, do not believe them. The road to Damascus was out in the wilderness. It was on its way. It was in between two cities. So I'm asking you, look at this. How prove to me that that light really was Jesus? Acts 3, verses 21. This is Luke writing to Theophilus, and he's, he brings up a lot of good points. This is in Peter's sermon. He quotes Peter's sermon. He says, Jesus was who must remain in heaven until the time of universal restoration that God announced long ago through his holy prophets. Jesus prepared his apostles. Saul was not prepared Everybody wants to believe that that light was Jesus, even though I'm going to continue to show the warnings that they have in here. I'm changing this around a little bit, so it might take me a minute here. Galatians 1.12, For I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it, but I received it through the revelation of Jesus Christ. Paul claims that it was a revelation of Jesus Christ. We believe Paul. That's because Paul believed the light. 2 Corinthians 12, verses 7b and 8. A thorn was given to me, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that he should leave that it should leave me. 
if Saul called by Jesus to do his ministry, why would Jesus put that in there? See, you and I blindly believe that it was because to keep him from being conceited. Well, we know he's a big boaster and he's prideful and he's arrogant. That's clear. All Pauline people know that. He boasts and brags and knocks all the other apostles down. This bright light is fully convincing Paul. And we were taught to believe Paul. When I returned, this is Acts 22, 17, when I returned to Jerusalem and was praying in the temple, I fell into a trance. I already said that. Make haste and get out of Jerusalem quickly. Oh, the next verse is what I'm supposed to share with you. This is what John the Beloved in, the, in 2 John 9. I don't know why I don't have a verse there, but 2 John 9. Oh, there's only one chapter there. Everyone who goes ahead and does not abide in the teachings of Christ does not have God. Whoever abides in the teachings has both Father and Son. If Paul would spend time and talk to the other apostles of what Jesus taught, but he says, he claims it, I've shared that in other videos, people, that he does not, he didn't take anything from them. Why would the bright light Jesus give Paul completely different doctrine, not remove the angel of thorn that's in his flesh, and why would he send him them away? Why would he send him away from his, his uh, the true apostles? Why would he want to get rid of him? Get him out of there. Second John verses ten and eleven. If anyone comes to you and does not the things and does not bring this teaching, do not receive him into your house or give him any greeting. For whoever greets him takes part in his wicked ways. If we compare this teachings, everybody says that Paul taught the same thing as Jesus Christ did. No, he did not. You're not checking it and testing it. Many of us can prove it. See? So what I'm asking you here is, why would I now believe the light? Was our Heavenly Father putting a test in Scripture or allowing something in Scripture to say, hey, is anyone teaching contrary to my son's words? Is anybody believing and following what a bright light says? Versus the three years with 12 or 14 men that he taught and all the other disciples besides the apostles. It's very important, people. It's very hard. You can condemn us or people for being heretics and changing things. I believe what these people are saying. I believe that Paul did not know who that was. He blindly believed the light at the beginning. But I believe his pride got to him and he enjoyed being the only sole person. Why? I always thought when I was growing up there, why, why did the Jews um, want to kill him all the time? Well, when I started studying Acts and I started studying the Old Testament, then I understood that Paul took away and spoke against the commandments of God. He was double-minded. To one person, he would say, you're justified by obeying. Another person said, you're not justified by obeying. I have all those verses. So, those of us who have chosen not to follow the bright light, and we've chosen to follow our Messiah's words and the Old Testament teachings of the prophets and the Torah, you can call us heretics, but we came out of heresy. We came out of that. And so, I just want to encourage you to test the scriptures. If, these is, if this is the infallible, inerrant word of God, then why did that bright light teach him something contrary to what Jesus said? Why would Jesus, within that saying, Peter was still alive. This is in a, in a very close, what, 10 or 15 year time period. Peter, John, and a lot of the others are still alive. They knew what their Messiah taught them. And here comes Paul in here. People go, oh, they sent him off to Tarsus, new missionary. No, it didn't, it didn't say that at all. 
They just said it, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him on a boat back to Tarsus. Paul of Tarsus. He came from Tarsus. Anyway, before you call people a heretic, you need to do some heavy study. And I don't mean study what you believe and find verses to back up what you believe. You need to study what other people. When somebody approached me and said that Paul contradicted Jesus, I said, prove it. Prove it. Then I looked at the verses. Then I found more. Then I found three pages. And I have over 800 pages of study now of my own studies. They might have been influenced by someone else, but I did my own studies, my own word searches, my own verses, and my own subject, study by subject. Do you want the truth? Do you want the truth? I want the truth. I want to stand before my Heavenly Father and say, I searched and searched for you so I could know you and not just what a book says. Father, thank you. I just pray, Lord, that you open up eyes. Father, I pray that those people who heart, people say their heart is after you, but they turn around and attack other believers because they disagree. That doesn't show the sign of the Spirit of Father, of the Heavenly Father inside them. Lord, I pray that you'll continue to work through Doug, work through Christy, Lord, and Father, work through Corey and the other people out there, Father. We want the truth and we want to serve you and we want to be examples. I work my hardest not to call people names and accuse people of stuff. Even though in print it may sound harsh. But Father, please have mercy on us. Help us to be able to share videos and takes with people to help them to say, okay, Everybody's question is, I need to check this out. Just because all the church loves it and likes it doesn't make it true. In Jesus' name, amen.